Okay, I think we are right on schedule. So, good morning, everyone. Third year in a row that we have the honor to have a presentation here at the Summit, so I hope you enjoy it. So, my name is Alejandro Comisario, I'm the CTO at Numbelli.com, a Latin American company that we made OpenStack happen for Latin American companies. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about, uh, about how to get metrics, not only for OpenStack, not only from KVN, but from big players, big cloud players like uh, VMware, AWS, and Azure also. Uh, the base, in the best case scenario, utilizing exactly the same tools that you have today uh, to get metrics, performance metric, utilization and information metric from an OpenStack cloud like Sailometer and Yaki. So uh, let's go through the agenda. Uh, we're going to run a, a, a quick through about what Gnocchi is. How many of you don't know what Gnocchi is? Perfect. So most of you really know, so that would be great to know how much to say about Gnocchi. Uh, on the second one, okay, uh, we got metrics. Uh, we got metrics on OpenStack already. They work great, and most of all, you see, if you use Gnocchi as the final backend for those metrics, but uh, what about the rest of the metric is if you are already experienced enough uh, to know what to do with the information that you already have from OpenStack, right? So um, we have, we detected three, again, big players, uh, like VMware, AWS, and Azure, where we can get information from. Most of our customers have uh, this fourth cloud technology utilizing, utilizing at, the same, at the same time for hybrid cloud. So once they really understand what's going on with OpenStack, they want to know what's going on with the rest of the technology that we're using. So that's the next chapter. And after that, I will try to show you uh, what we got. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to do it live uh, because our, our environment has been shut down. But I made a video already, so I think I'll, I'll be good. So let's talk about Gnocchi. Um, Gnocchi is a time series database. Uh, a couple of days ago, it's not anymore an OpenStack project. Um, there, I, I gave you the link about that news, uh, but it was past week. Um, we consider Sailometer Collector best friend. If you wanna, if you're using MongoDB, consider seriously uh, getting metrics to this backend, which is the one that actually works. Um, it's a multi-tenant uh, time series database. I mean, every information, every metric that you put into uh, Gnocchi, actually uh, the owner is a specific project. It's a specific project, and in the quite near future, it will be a project into a specific domain also. Uh, it's really high performance. Um, it's, it was built to work really fast. Uh, basically because all of the information that you put into Gnocchi is pre-aggregated. Uh, if you want to, for example, know uh, what's going on with an instance uptime every five minutes, for example, that information that you push into Gnocchi will be pre-calculated for you, and you can see five minutes, one week, three months, one year, and er all the information already exists, which is collected by, by a part of Gnocchi that you are, you are gonna visit afterwards. Uh, uses two different backends, one for the actually real storage where the information is, and one for the index, that is the backend, the storage backend, which actually makes the connection between the moving parts in Yoki, which are the resources and the archive policies and, and the metrics itself. Um, uses lots of different backends. You have lots of different backend options depending on what um, setup you already have in OpenStack. And if you don't want to use it directly with OpenStack, because you ac it actually can work standalone, and you can, you can use it if you are running instances on AWS and you want to push metrics directly, directly there, uh, you can use pretty much the, te the technology that you will have there. So we're going to visit it in just a moment. And it's a, the great thing is that not only is a team series database, but it's also as a service, which, is, which means that it's running on a, on a REST API, which is amazing, because that means that uh, you can easily utilize 
most of the tool that you already have on whatever is the technology that you're using that I named previously. So let's, let's run a, a quick run through about how does uh, the architecture of Gnocchi looks and what are the backend that, you're, that you can use. Uh, the preferred, the most, the fastest one, and the most efficient one is Ceph uh, to put the information in, and we are always talking about the metrics and the aggregation, right? The default, um, the default backend is it's a file. That means that if you want to use file and you are deploying Gnocchi highly available and highly scalable, you can kind of share, for example, on NFS through all the Gnocchis and you will use the file backend and that works just fine. Like I said, uh, if you don't have Ceph or if you're uh, working on a public cloud, uh, like for example, Amazon, uh, since the 3.1 version, you can utilize uh, Amazon S3 as the file backend, which works pretty well. It needs a little bit of a workarounds, but it works really well. If not, you have another options, like for example, OpenStack Swift, if you have a ready object store. For example, you have full block storage, another technology that it's not Ceph, so you, that's not an option, but you have a, a pretty well and strong setup of object storage, you can use Swift, or you can use Redis if you are skillful enough or, or you trust on a Redis cluster to put the, all the information. That will work just great also. So what happens, the client, which are us, we interact directly and only with the Gnocchi API. The Gnocchi API uh, interacts with the first backend, which is a message storage, which is a temporary storage, where the metrics that are real-time generated are put it on the first place. Uh, and then we have a background process, which is called Gnocchi Metric D, which is the responsible of getting that temporary information and do the pre-aggregation based on uh, the archive policies. An archive policy in Gnocchi is the possibility that, that you have to define if you want to calculate by, on any metric by, I want the value by five minutes every one week, every three months, every one year. I want the value of all the metric on that granularity and I want to pre-calculate the minimum, the maximum, the average of that exactly same value. So the responsible doing all that processing is metric D, which is, a, which is a scalable process that you can scale the same way that you, that you scale any OpenStack project. Um, and you can also, it, it's running amazing on containers also. Um, that will be put by Gnocchi metric D on the final storage, which could be different from the message storage from the temporary one, but the metric storage will be one of the sources that I named previously, one of the options that you have on the left. Uh, and then we have the indexer. The indexer is, uh, most of the time, is a, re a relation of the database. It could be the preferred will be Postgres, but it, it works amazing on, on MySQL. We use it on MySQL, and it works amazing. And as I said, um, the index is responsible to, OK, I have a resource type, which is instance. I have then resources from that resource type, which are all the instances that I have running, not only on my OpenStack cloud, but also uh, might be on a different technology. Uh, and then those resources have metrics, uh, and those metrics belong to all these archive policies. The, the, the responsible, the one responsible to get that information, to have that information uh, stored, is the index service. So, one Gnocchi, it's fast, uh, it's really fast. Um, for the ones that are, are used to wait 10, 20 minutes or more uh, to get a query from Salumeter API with MongoDB as backend, um, I'm talking about the exactly same query in less than 10 seconds, 20 seconds. I mean, it's really fast. And, and most of all, if you use it uh, with the preferred backend, which is Ceph. Um, and that has directly to do with the second point, right? I mean, if today in OpenStack, you want Salimeter, if you want to use Salimeter, okay, so you need to go with Gnocchi uh, as the, as the, the preferred uh, final storage backend. Scales for real. Scale for real means that the API is, is really efficient to get, it, to get thousands of metrics, even per seconds, 
from uh, a medium to kind of large cloud setup. Okay, so um, if you need more APIs, you can spawn them as easy as you spawn any other API. And as I said, it works amazing on containers uh, and exactly the same uh, with the metric D processes, which is the one that actually uses CPU. Uh, so it's as easy as spawn as many as you wish as soon as you get the performance and the timing on the metric processing that, that you need. There is no hard storage de dependency. As I showed you previously, I mean, you have lots of options in storage to use, right? So again, uh, if you're running on AWS and you don't want to deploy a, a Ceph cluster on virtual machines, or maybe you do for a cost uh, matter, you can do it. If not, if you're already utilizing S3, you can just point you know, to utilize S3. If you want to use EFS, for example, and you want to share a file system among lots of Gnocchi instances, you can do it. I mean, the options are uh, kind of enough to adapt uh, to the scenario that, that you might have. And it will not leave you hanging. It will not leave you hanging means that um, it will have to happen something really weird on the storage backend for you to, to start to feel that as more metrics that you get, as more the performance uh, gets degraded on the API, that really doesn't happen. I mean, we have lots of metrics on the Gnocchi where we are uh, pushing all the, all the, our customers' uh, virtual machines instances, and not only virtual machines, but also hypervisor, and, and, and works uh, really amazing. So for those that you don't, you don't know uh, how things are done, basically in OpenStack, in OpenStack we have uh, mainly two entities that are gonna, that where we are gonna get metrics from. We have the compute nodes, which are the hypervisors, which, uh, which is the, the Asian, the Salumidate Asian Central, the one responsible to get those metrics from. And then we have the virtual machines. The virtual machines, uh, we have the Salumidate Asian compute uh, plugin that is running on the compute nodes. And those are the responsible to connect with, for example, in KVM with Libvirt and they're gonna get the metrics of all the virtual machine. And not only a provisor, but virtual machine, they're gonna push the information that they get to the OpenStack notification bus, which most of the time is a RabbitMQ cluster, which is pretty much specific for that task, and you don't want to utilize exactly the same cluster, uh, the RabbitMQ cluster that you're utilizing for the notification and the RPC on the rest of the cloud. Um, then, after we got all that information, we have the Salumeter notification agent, which is the responsible of doing uh, what we call, what, what it's called the transformer. A transformer could be just reading the metric and, and pushing it back again to a temporary queue on RabbitMQ to be read by the Salumeter collector. Or a transformer could be, for example, calculating in flight the average of, of a, a specific value based on the previous version that, that happened. So that is the stack of the, of the notification nation, which actually scales as well as, the, as any other uh, entity that we have here uh, on, the, on the presentation. Then we have the Salumidate Collector, which pushes directly to Gnocchi. And then we have all the Gnocchi infrastructure, which is pretty much uh, what, I, what I talked uh, previously. And then I draw the rocket platform, which is uh, our way to, to show the metrics to our customer, to show everything that is placed into Gnocchi. Uh, so the, I'll, I'll try to, uh, to show you a bit about, about what we're doing uh, with, with those metrics. Then, again, the indexer, which is responsible to put everything together about the relationship between the resources and, and the metrics. Uh, most of the time will be, I don't know, a Maria Galera the Bed cluster, it could be a Postgre cluster, or it could be if you're running on the AWS, it runs pretty well on RDS, the RDS service. Um, the metric D, the responsible to do the pre-aggregations for Gnocchi to, to answer really fast to any query that you have, and that's it. So, Yes, it works. It, it, it works. It works amazing because it's OpenStack and, and everything was built uh, to work with OpenStack. But our customers said, okay, what you're showing to me 
that it's placed in Junyaki, what you showed to me regarding uh, the utilization of my cloud is amazing, but still, what can I do? I'm running AWS, I'm running Azure, I'm, doubling, I'm running VMware, which is not connected with OpenStack, which is not managed by OpenStack. What can I do with that? What can I do with that information? I want four or five tabs on my browser uh, to explode information. So we thought, OK, um, we know Cellumeter. We know that works really well. We know the architecture. We've seen it behave uh, as amazing as it behaved with two VMs, with thousands of VMs. So we, ha we thought, why not uh, utilize this information uh, uh, and this knowledge that we have to try to get the metrics from all the players uh, from a single architecture, a single way of doing things. So that's exactly what we did. And we started to kind of try to understand how Cellumeter works, how, the pl how you can plug in into uh, a Cellumeter, um, for example, Asian compute process uh, and define uh, a specific namespace for you to get kind of metrics from, from another provider, which is not OpenStack. So what we did with VMware, what we're looking at here, it's kind of exactly how it's done with an with a OpenStack managed vCenter that is happening today. Uh, you have the Cellumeter pooling agent, which is the compute namespace, which is kind of uh, connected with the, with the vCenter API. But actually, on the OpenStack managed side, it happens to call lots of requests to Keystone to then call to Nova and ask what are the instances that are actually existing on, the, on this vCenter deployment. We made some safe assumptions about uh, how to do that without having OpenStack in the back, like uh, what projects are all those instances on vCenter that has nothing to do with OpenStack uh, part of, what, what is the domain that these instances are part of? What's going on with the flavor? There's, there's not a flavor information, so what do we do with the, with the conjunction of the memory, the CPU, et cetera, uh, which is configurable uh, by the, the Salometer conf file. So you can kind of uh, place those configurations there and, and launch the Salometer agent as easy as you launch it uh, with anything that actually is running OpenStack, and it will start to get information of, about every virtual machine that is managed by Divi Center, and it will use uh, the same in infrastructure and the same architecture that you have already in place. Um, maybe a little bit different happens with, uh, with our version of, of Azure and Amazon Web Services, basically because um, what happens is uh, you have credentials, credentials to log in and to call the API in both cases. So what we did is we placed Barbican into the picture, which is the, the key management API, uh, the official key management API and secret management for OpenStack. So what we do is um, we put on every customer we have, we put their secrets into, into Barbican, into a project that we assign to this customer. And then he might have a single project can have uh, like 10 credentials can have uh, five for Azure, five for the AWS, for example. So uh, we, we developed the hybrid pooler, which is a plugin of Salometer, where actually it's um, intelligent enough to call Barbican, to go through Barbican and say, okay, I have all, the, all these customers, I have all these projects, I'm gonna read all the credentials that I have on Barbican and I'm gonna use those credentials to start calling the API and getting the information from Azure and Amazon Web Services. And we, and we make sure that this same hybrid pooler uh, pushes the metrics with the same names and with the same um, format that actually is being done on KVM, for example. For you to, if you, for example, are already exploding uh, the information that, that you have in Yoki, you made exactly the same query, but with specific metadata on Yoki that exists, like for example, the provider, you need a specific metadata to, metadata to know what virtual machine belongs to what technology or provider, right? So uh, the provider is a specific metadata on resources for you to realize uh, what, what technology is running on. And then, again, that is being pushed to RapidMQ, then that is being pushed to the Salometer notification agent, will we generate the transforming, will back, get back to the RabbitMQ, and then the Salometer collector will be the responsible 
to call the API as fast and as violent as the amount of metric you have needs to. So what other things can you do with that? You can do show what can charge back with exactly the same information. We had a presentation on 2016 on the Austin Summit. I'll leave you the link there about how to do show back and charge back utilizing another API, which is, cloud, which is called Cloud Kitty, which is officially on the big tent. And, and you can do lots of things, like not only seeing what's going on with the cloud, but only charging for what's going on with the cloud also. Um, and you can do capacity planning also. We, made, we did also a presentation on the Barcelona Summit, which, which was amazing. And, and we showed like what can you do to kind of foresee the future, to kind of see, OK, this is what's going on with my application today regarding performance. What is going to happen from here to one year if I don't change anything? What's going on with the CPU? What will happen with the storage? What will happen with lots of things? And you also can run simulation scenarios. What will do if I change the flavor? What will happen if I double the requests that are entering into my application? So you can get exciting information. From, from, that, from that part also. So, and you can do cloud monitoring and analytics, which is kind of what we are trying to do right now. We are trying to get the information from, um, from Yoki that help us to know what's going on in the instances, not only on OpenStack, but also on, on the rest of the providers. So um, again, I was trying to do a live demo, but um, the, the developers insisted uh, to do a migration right in the middle of my presentation, so I, they asked me to, to have a video, so sorry for that. Um, so I will need to start and stop as, as fast and as good as I can uh, to show you how this works. And this is, this is the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is a, is a Horizon dashboard. It has been modified by us as a, as a couple of plugins. After this, uh, we have the, the first layer, which is we show uh, all the provider, the provider that we have. This is a this is a gnocchi call, which is okay. Give me all the resources ordered by provider, so we can really uh, and, and and fast to we can see what's going on with the with the specific customer on a specific domain. Okay, in your case, will be a, just a domain. What's going on with all the resources with a specific metadata, which is a provider. So we can make this tree and organize the information there, and we can show to our customer what's going on with everything they have, no matter where the cloud is. So you can see all the instances on every provider, but if we're talking about OpenStack, I can see not only uh, the instances, but also I can see where they are running regarding the hypervisor. Um, then, if I click on an hypervisor, I can see, for example, I can query Gnocchi and see, okay, what's going on with the, uh, the resources that are running on this specific hypervisor. And I can do graphs like this one, like, for example, to, to see uh, what's going on with all the instances that are running on that hypervisor. And not only to show what instances, but also to show uh, what's, going on, what's going on with them. I have, we have a, a color coding way of showing things. Like if you have it in gray, that means that w for that resource that actually exists, we don't have metrics. Or metrics doesn't happen from one hour from now. So uh, it's kind of the, the instance is not doing nothing. And then the rest of the color that go from green to red, uh, it's a pretty fine values that we assume to be safe regarding what's going on with the CPU usage, the memory, the networking, and the storage, uh, for you to know if the instance actually is doing something, which, which could be amazing or could be wrong for the instance to be doing that something, but it's kind of configurable. Um, then for us, it's kind of important to, to show to the customer what are the optimal, the wasted, and, and, and the idle instances uh, for the customer to know, you know, to quickly run uh, through about what's going on on the compute node or what's going on with the specific provider. Um, so that, that is information that, that a, a user can, could be um, of pretty much use. And you have the same possibility to see what, what instances are powered off, what instances are overcommitted, or what instances are idle. Idle means they're kind of doing nothing despite the flavor that they're using, right? Um, 
Perfect. So, and if you click on a specific instance, what we do is we call Gnocchi and say, okay, give me all the metrics that, that I have on this specific instance, and I'll show you the, CP, the, the most important ones, right? The CPU, uh, the memory, the networking, and the, the storage usage. Uh, we define a, a health marking, which is, which is pretty much a way of saying this instance is stressed, if you, if you want to say in a way. And we use, we show also thresholds defined uh, based on these, these specific metrics. Uh, this, is a, this is not the newest version. The newest version will, ha will show uh, a graph for every metric for the threshold for a specific metric to be defined because maybe 80% uh, uh, of CPU utilization is a critical threshold that is not exactly the same, for example, for uh, the memory or, or the networking utilization. So, uh, but we kind of show the user what's, what's going on with the threshold predefined for all the metrics, uh, which is a way of the user to know uh, what's going on with, uh, with that specific instance. And a little bit of performance tips about, okay, you can change the flavor or, or you can resize up and down the instance. So then we have a, a, a quick way of showing the user also what's going on with the real-time metrics. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, which the user can filter and the user can filter and say, oh, for example, I want only the OpenStack provider uh, instances. Then we we call Gnocchi and we say, okay, give me all the re instances of resources that are the provider OpenStack. Give me all the resources where the metadata host where it's running. It's finishes with SM03 uh, and they call API. Then you can filter and see only those those instances and take up quick look of what's going on with the, with the metrics, with the performance of those instances uh, really fast. We show the, the main ones. We show the, the ones that we think are important for the user, uh, like memory, CPU utilization, for you to know uh, what's going on with the performance. And you can change granularities, right? And this is, again, uh, the exactly same call to Gnocchi. I don't want the granularity by one hour. I want the granularity by one day. I want the granularity by one weekly, I want it monthly or maybe yearly. Uh, the user can, can do a full screen or they can kind of zoom in you know, on a specific metric and they can see how the, the rest of the metric are, are getting updated, basically because you might be interested on in knowing, okay, this happened with the CPU of my instances uh, I, uh, a day ago, so what, what happened with the rest of the resources when the CPU went up? Uh, how a specific metric actually uh, gets in the middle of, of the performance of my application, of, of to understand what's going on with my application uh, regarding the performance, uh, the overall performance. We have exactly the same metric for the hypervisor because, again, it's a resource, it's a different resource type uh, from, from the one on, in instances, so you can pretty much take a look at the same. And again, this is really important. Everything is happening on Gnocchi, right? I mean, we don't, we don't put anything weird in the middle um, to show this information. Then we have a pretty much practical and analytical way of, of showing things, which are the dashboards. The dashboard, it's a, it's a graphic representation of a, specific, of a specific metric. We have a graphical representation of what's going on with, this, with the memory usage. We have a graphical representation of what's going on with the CPU utilization, the disk utilization. And this, as Gnocchi allows you, can, you can graph things like this one uh, to start to interact with what's going on with, the, with my OpenStack provider, what's going on with my IWS instances, what's going on with the uh, the CPU utilization of OpenStack. I want to I wanna see what specifically is going on with OpenStack. I want to see the instances that are using this average of CPU utilization. I want to see how they are divided. Or I want to take, for example, AWS out of the picture. I mean, this is something that you can uh, make uh, pretty much interactive uh, as soon as you get the information uh, directly from Gnocchi. Uh, you can see what's going on with the disk utilization of a specific, again, provider. I want to know what's going on with VMware uh, while something specific on my application happened with the CPU on OpenStack because maybe traffic went uh, a little bit 
I don't know, violent on another provider. So um, you, can, you can take a, a quick look at that one also. Net, uh, we show information that we think uh, will be important uh, to the user, like networking bytes, outgoing and ingoing, and for example, vCPUs attached by OpenStack flavor. That's not that much important information, but for you to understand what's the power of the information that, that you can get uh, from, from the Gnocchi API once you get uh, all the metrics uh, pushed into the platform. And again, these graphics are, I don't know, I, are interactive, but um, you can do pretty much whatever you want. If you want to just graph something for a specific provider, you can do it. You have lots of tools to do that, so um, that, will, that will work uh, amazing also. So not only that, but also if you're, if you're showing, uh, if you're using uh, Showback and Chargeback also, uh, you can kind of um, use that information to also show uh, what's going on with the, with the cost of the, of the instances, with the cost related to the specific performance uh, metrics that you have on your cloud also. We, in that exactly way, you can do a quick run through about what's going on with the, with the current cost about your specific platform. This is, this is Cloud Kitty. This is with a little bit of modification about how to uh, interact with different metadata that, that Gnocchi has. So I can see quickly what's going on with the cost of OpenStack. Uh, what's, I want to see it divided by project, and I want to see how the total cost of that project is being divided by all the instances I have. And then we have the different cloud provider, which is information that you can get exactly from the same hybrid uh, pooler that I showed on the, on the architecture previously. So you can see pr pretty much what's going on with the cost of, of lots of different parts of the private cloud technology that you're using. In this case, we are showing what's going on with S3 divided by bucket, uh, what's the price uh, related, related with that. So the idea, the idea of this video was to, was, to show you, was to show you what you can do with this information, which is, which we believe is really cool. That's the main reason why we did it. And what we want to do is from next week after the summit, we want, we want to open source uh, both agents uh, for you that if you have already OpenStack and you said, okay, I'm, I'm getting metrics from the rest of the players that I've been naming off, um, I want to utilize what I'm already doing on Cylometer, or at least I understood or I think the architecture is cool, so I want to try to get the metro, I want to deploy Gnocchi, which is really easy, and then I want to use these agents to try to see how things are going with the metrics on, on the rest of my, of my uh, cloud providers. Um, so that will happen. We need to kind of run through the code a little bit for you to not to see messy things. Uh, which actually is, is how it's looking like uh, exactly right now. So from NetWeeks, you will be able to, uh, to push this. And maybe in the best case scenario, it, if, it's, if it has a use case and if it's something that, that the community feels that, it, that might be a fit into OpenStack, we could maybe have in our repository into the, the OpenStack uh, official GitHub. Um, so, Okay, I think we have a couple of minutes uh, to run through some questions about what we, what we saw. So if you please, I would love to hear what you're thinking. I would love to hear uh, what you think is right or what you think is wrong. We have some minutes. So if you want to, like this guy going through the microphone would be amazing. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so you mentioned you're about to open source the agent part. Yeah. Um, maybe I missed it, or, but what, what's the, um, the Horizon plugin part that you were showing there? And what's the status of that project? Uh, the Horizon plugin, that's a good question. The Horizon plugin is, is something that we are kind of seeing how it works uh, with the customer. We, we are seeing how to integrate things in Horizon, which is not a, a trivial thing to do. Um, it's something that we are developing, and the status is that is I, 
I can't say. I can't say because we are testing it. We are we are using our customers to test it because we want to right push it into the community, uh, basically because we don't know if it fits for some for something that the community might be interested of. Basically because we explode and we showed information in a way that we are not sure that's the way the most of the user want to explode information. So what we thought it's mainly uh, maybe on the on the first step open source the agent and and, and start to see how the user utilize those agents and how they think that that information must be gathered and must be shown in a way that has a specific use case. So then if we kind of see that matches what we have already, we can think uh, pretty strongly on, on open source it also. Thank you. More questions? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, could you tell me how big is your deployment? How many metrics do you collect? Yes. Um, today, I'm, I'm going to tell you about all the clouds that we are collecting metrics, uh, not only OpenStack. Because I don't know if it was understood, but for us, a customer is, a, is an OpenStack domain. The, the infrastructure that we're using is based on OpenStack purely. And for us, if you are using AWS and, and you want to show uh, and you want to utilize this dashboard, for us, you are a domain, right? So we have lots of domain which are customer, and we have lots of project into that domain, which is a specific cloud provider. Um, today, in total, we are pushing metric. The, the finest granularity that we're pushing is 10 minutes, which is for us enough to show the customer. Uh, what's going on with the performance, and from there, utilize that information to do showback and chargeback from weekly, monthly, et cetera. So today, what's happening into our platform, we are pushing information in about 2,000 instances, uh, and, and that is using a, a really low uh, footprint on, on our resources. We are, we are uh, handling all that traffic uh, from 10 minutes from 2,000 virtual machines, utilizing uh, three Gnocchi API containers running on virtual machines, and only four uh, Gnocchi metric D to do all the processing in as fast as we want for the customer to show all the metrics. So um, you won't need uh, that big infrastructure because Gnocchi works really well and it's really efficient. And all the information we have already almost one year of information already placed there, and it's not taking more than uh, 30, 40 gigabytes of information, which is really efficient on the way on that Gnocchi actually handles information. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other doubts? Perfect. So, two minutes early. So, I don't want to waste time, but anyways, uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>